So indication of a drug use in patients with CKD. So it's a busy table, but I mean generally when drugs are prescribed, so some drugs like insulin is obviously prescribed for diabetes. It's obvious, but some drugs like antidepressants or antibiotics could be prescribed for several reasons. But in the case of antidepressants, so this Quebec, Canada study suggested that antidepressants were prescribed only for 55% for depression, followed by anxiety for 18%, and insomnia or sleeping problems for 10%, and pain and 6%, and many other indications. And in the case of antibiotics, antibiotics may be prescribed for pneumonia or UTI or other infections. So sometimes researchers need to identify why drugs were prescribed, because this could be a kind of confounding factor in the study. So this Quebec Canada database is very special in that every time doctors prescribe a drug, they need to input indication, every prescription. So in that case, identifying indication is very easy. But in most databases in the world, like CPRD and Japanese JAMDAC database, diagnosis and prescription are separate so that we don't know which diagnosis is contributing to the prescription. So that the kind of strategy is needed to identify when is indication of a drug recorded in the database. So I found, in the case of antidepressants, I found a previous study comparing seven European databases when the diagnoses are recorded for individual antidepressant prescription. And in the case of CPRD, if you look at only three months before and after the incident day of antidepressants, the proportion of indication recorded was very small at 30%. But if you look back one year or two years or three years before, it's more likely to be recorded. Because doctor, once they input diagnosis, and they never record it again. So it's, I mean, different country by country and database by database. So some databases, every time doctors may input diagnosis. But in the UK, it's not, and I don't know in Japan. So according to this result, I decided to look back all the diagnosis records in the database to identify indication for antidepressants. And this is a result in patients with CKD who initiated antidepressants by type of antidepressants and major indication. So SSRI was prescribed for depression, 63% of the cases, followed by anxiety, 34 and some neuropathic pain and off-label indication. Off-label means uh, tekiogai, shoho in Japanese. While tricyclic antidepressants were prescribed not for depression and anxiety very often, but pain and probably sleeping problems or uh, just sick sickness or some, some symptoms. So this is a result. And importantly, I compare this between patients with and without CKD. And importantly, this was not very different. So this is a kind of against my expectation. So I expected, in my clinical experience, I expected that antidepressants are prescribed for off-label or tekiogai shoho in patients with CKD, but it was not in the case in the UK and in the real world practice, at least in the UK. So it's kind of boring result. So to conclude the first paper, patients with CKD received antidepressants more frequently than Asian sex matched people without CKD in terms of both prevalence and incidence, while its reasons were not very different. So this is a result of a drug utilization study in my first paper. Okay. So do you have any questions or comments? I've got a question. Yeah. Why, why did you think that 
the CKD population would have different indications for the antidepressants? I mean, uh, generally, I mean, we don't know. I mean, when patients with CKD say they are not very fine, they may be sick or just, or they may be depressed, but may, may not be depressed, just sick so, or tired or, so if we use the same questionnaire, I mean for depression, yeah. patients with CKD may be identified as having depression because they answer to the question, they are tired and they are not motivated. So in that case, doctors may prescribe drugs expecting depression, but I mean, in, in the real world, I mean, yeah. it could be for just sickness. In that case, antidepressants may not be effective. So that's why I, I expected the difference, but it was not. Well, that could be because of just recording practice. That's a good question. So first, uh, to be honest, I, I was okay to publish it in one big paper, but the professor in the electronic health records, uh, who is Liam Smith, always said that one paper should have one message. So I, in the middle, I found that my kind of objective was a bit different. I mean, the first paper is looking at the prevalence and comparing it in patients with CKD and without CKD. And the second paper was more focusing on patients, um, excuse me, uh, the side effect of drug. And in that case, comparison is not between patients with and without CKD, but comparison is between pe uh, period with and without antidepressants. So if I put this into one paper, maybe reviewers may be a bit confused, or it's over the volume. So one paper can have only 3,000 words. So, but something I know that sometimes it, it's criticized that I mean one one research I mean one research is split into two or three to make more impact factors or something like that. But I think it's not bad bad idea to first publish drug utilization and then move on to the side effects or relative risk of drug in the case of pharmacology. Uh, to be honest, it's not validated. So, um, so just this time, I just looked at, I mean, used previous code list already published in previous studies conducted by psychiatrists. And it's, yeah, so ideally, anxiety and depression should be validated. And also, oh, I didn't talk, but I used not only diagnosis codes, but symptom codes. So in, in the UK database, I mean, kind of, there are kind of symptom codes, like, so not depression diagnosis, but I mean, just saying depressed. So this may not be diagnosis, final diagnosis, just patients were depressed and doctors chose depressed symptom codes. But if I excluded that, that the proportion and the prevalence was going down a lot. And previous psychiatrists using this database used, decided to use both diagnosis codes and symptom codes. Yeah, so, so that's, a, I mean, of course, tough decision. But in this case, I didn't have time, I mean, didn't spend too much because this is not my study outcome, but I mean, secondary, kind of secondary outcome. So I just used previous studies. Thank you. Good question.